Yeah. No, I'm, I'm standing right in front of it. No. No, there's no way I'm going to find your contact lens in there. No. It, look, I got, I got a thing, all right? I got to go. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Hello there. Welcome to my show. We here at Wrinkled Apron Productions want to make a show about food and cooking and culture. But Mac, you ask. That's me. I'm Mac. Aren't there already literally tens of thousands, if not millions of shows about food and cooking and culture starring beautiful people with huge budgets and globe-trotting adventures? Yes, there are. But I believe in dreams. And my dream is to have a show where I eat and I cook and I'm beautiful. Let's get started. All right, folks, welcome to the War Room. Today, our topic is salmon. Did you know there are over 7,500 different species of salmon in the United States alone? That includes the Pink Lady, the Brayburn, and the Red... Nope, uh, I'm being told that that's apples, actually. Uh, Brent, hand me the... No, hand me the thing on salmon. No, I don't, I don't want to do apples. I, Brent, hand me the thing on salmon. And don't come back, your stupid ideas and your stupid apples. It's my show. <sighs> okay. All right. There we go. We don't need him. Okay. As I was saying, uh, in North America, uh, in the Pacific, there are five species of salmon. There's the red salmon, also called the sockeye. The coho, also called a silver. The king salmon, uh, also called the chinook salmon. And the uh, pink and chum salmon, also called a dog salmon. I'm from Alaska, and we always enjoyed the king salmon, the red salmon, and the silver salmon. But I'm from this part of Alaska, right in the middle. I'm about as far away from water as you can get in the United States. This is where the fish are, down here and here. It's about 350 miles. So I know more about cooking salmon than I knew about catching salmon. Luckily, my dad frequently went down and fished. So why don't we give him a call right now? Hey, Dad, it's me. No, 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 car's running fine. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not back in the hospital. No, I don't need any money. Well, you know, actually, I just started this cooking show, and you can't believe how expensive lighting is. Hello? Huh? Let me just try him back. Hmm. Straight to voicemail. Oh, well. Luckily, I remember how Dad caught fish. He did dip netting. Dip netting is where you go down and you, uh, you stick your net in the water and uh, the fish jump into it and then you bring them home and eat them. So uh, all you need, luckily, is a stream, a net, and a bucket to hold the fish. And I just happen to know that the river near my house has salmon swimming up it every single day. Let's go catch some fish. The nice thing about having a river in your backyard, all you gotta do is walk on down and put your net in the water and catch the salmon. That was a disaster, but luckily I still have one piece of salmon here. So we're gonna do salmon a la papin. It's one of my favorite recipes and it's super simple. It has one ingredient, salt. Optionally, you can also use pepper, which I like to do. And for the recipe, we're probably gonna need some tongs, a fork helps, and a lidded pan. Now, the pan should be nonstick and as heavy as you can. We want it to retain heat and get it really hot. So also, part of the recipe is steaming the fish. So if we have a really large pan and a small piece of fish, 
we have to fill the whole pan with steam before we get any good cooking action. So try to use a pan that's roughly the size of the fish. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, we're gonna do some salt. Uh, make sure you get all sides, including the skin. Next, some pepper, that's optional. Get your cooktop positioned, nice and hot. The first time I did this, I set it for 350. Uh, I ended up taking it off, turning it up to 450, let the pan get hot, and then put it in. Note that there was no oil. This is a little time lapse, having fun with the photography. It fries from the bottom, and the entire dish steams. And then we'll check it. Ooh, just a tiny bit rare right in the middle, which is awesome. All right, nice crispy bottom, still edible, but a little bit charry. And now a little taste. Don't forget the skin. Hey, Hubs. Hey. How's it going? It's fine. Honey, you're watching Julie on mute again. You're not okay. You only do that when you're really upset. What's going on? Well, I just, I wanted to do this whole cooking show and about salmon. I tried catching some and that was a disaster. I had one little piece, so I made salmon a la pepin, and that was pretty good, but I just, I just feel like there's, I should be doing more. Well, have you thought of smoking? Oh, I think of smoking all the time. I haven't uh, had a cigarette since the day I met you. Hubs. I used to smoke a pack Hubs. of Hubs, no, not smoking cigarettes, smoked salmon. Oh, smoking salmon. That would be pretty good, huh? Yeah. Well, I would need a lot more salmon, and I just don't have any way to get any. Just go to the store. Oh, yeah, they won't let me near the meat counter ever since the incident. Well, I'm sure if you apologize, everyone will be fine with it. I don't know. It was a lot of pixie sticks. I'm sorry, hon. But, honey, please. I really want them. For me? Okay, well, the butcher's out of the question, but there is one guy I can call. Okay, he's gonna be here any second. He's a fixer known only as the Norwegian. Nobody knows where he's from, but I did a favor for him back in the early aughts and he owes me. So, he's uh, gonna be here any second. Oh man, this guy's serious business. Oh, he's here. Okay, he hates, he hates eye contact and people that are taller of him. Look short, look short. You've wanted tree. Yeah, farm raised Atlantic. My trustees will be acceptable. Oh, whoa. That's no joke, huh? I never go. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. have to pay me? Oh, yeah. It's just like you asked. I don't know when anybody needs that many pixie sticks. Well, that's for me to know. Right. Of course. All right. Oh, hey, you, you forgot your briefcase and gun. Oh, well, that's premium Atlantic farm-raised salmon. If, uh, if the word gets out that you've got that here, you'll need that protection. Besides, you've got my muscle. All right. It's like, it's like six bucks a pound. Okay, now that that's over with, I've got the two largest fillets that match right here. We're gonna be coating them with a dry brine after we trim them and, uh, and then letting that set for about 24 hours to get a cure on the salmon. A cure, it's a preservation method where you use either salt uh, or sugar, in this case both, to draw moisture out of the salmon, which allows it to be preserved longer. Uh, so we're gonna coat both sides, we'll end up putting them together like a sandwich uh, pressing out a lot of the moisture overnight, and then we'll put them in the smoker tomorrow and cold smoke them. So uh, I'm using Alton Brown's recipe. He does like a cup of kosher salt, half a cup of brown sugar, half a cup of white sugar, which is a one-to-one -one salt sugar ratio. Uh, I've 
I find that it's just usually a little too salty, so I've upped the, uh, the sugar to two thirds cup of each. So it'll be just a little more sugar than salt. And also we've got some black peppercorns that we're gonna crush in the mortar and pestle. So let's get going and I'll show you those steps. All right, first we're gonna grind up our pepper and then we're gonna mix these together. I like to use a fork to break up the clumps, a little bit of white sugar mixed in to continue to break up the clumps. Once the clumps are all done, include the salt. Don't forget your pepper. And then lay out the fillets for trimming. I like to trim off all the belly fat. Sometimes you gotta saw it. And also get the tails. What we're looking for is trying to make mostly uniform thickness. And also, it fits better in the smoker uh, if it's a little shorter. So, save these trimmed ends. They fry up really quick and nicely for an easy breakfast with eggs. All right, next we're gonna lay down some cure in roughly the shape of the filet. Put skin down and then continue to place cure on top of both filets. Now, honestly, I should have probably done triple the cure. I didn't get the cure I wanted out of this, but continue to rub cure on all sides, including the top, and then wrap it up as best you can. As this cure leaches moisture out of the salmon, you're gonna end up with kind of this sticky salmon goop that's gonna to wanna to run everywhere. After this, I went ahead and did like a spiral wrap to get it nice and tight, try to keep as much of that cure liquid in. And then I placed it in a couple of uh, Walmart shopping bags so that if any does leak out, hopefully it'll be caught by the bags and doesn't end up in my cooler. All right, now we're ready for the next phase of curing. So some of you have the luxury of a big refrigerator that you can put these in, I don't. So we're gonna cooler, we're gonna make sure that the cooler is sealed, very important. Don't ask me how I know. We're gonna need some ice to keep the salmon cool while it cures. And then normally I, uh, I put a pan down and put the salmon between you know two pans and then put weight on top, but my pans are being used for another project, which maybe we'll see tomorrow, but, uh, I found some boards. So we're gonna do some makeshift and then I got bricks right here for a weight. So let's get started. All right, this is pretty self-explanatory. Put in the ice, lay down your bottom board, the salmon, another flat board on top, put in your weight, stack it up. Oh, whoa. all right, put a little board in there for bracing. And there. Yeah. Um, uh, ah. Okay, there we go. All right, smoke looks good. We'll sink the probe thermometer in, put that fillet towards the back, other fillet in the front, latch it up, plug in the thermometer, and aim for an internal of 160 degrees. So that thing is gonna be smoking away for several hours. It's gonna take a long time, but it's gonna be worth it. So I recommend you get comfortable. What's up? I'm hungry. Oh, what do you want me to make you? Well, I was thinking salmon. Of course you were. Mm -hmm. oh, my, my. All right, this recipe is called Salmon and Pepillon, and it's an extremely easy recipe, the way I like all my salmon recipes. So start off with some lemon, some extra virgin olive oil, smear it in the middle of the folded piece of aluminum foil. You wanna make sure that the fillets have a light coating on all sides. Position, because we're gonna make a pouch. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. Put the lemon slices. And then I like to put a little piece of butter in the middle. 
And then what I find is that the lemon juice, the salmon juice, the butter, and that extra bit of extra virgin olive oil I put on will make a nice sauce. So fold this up tightly and put it in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. Well, let's make a quick broccoli dish. A little bit of water in a sealable pan, dump the broccoli in. Just make sure everything fits in there. A little salt and pepper on top. And put the lid on in the microwave, six minutes on high. Okay, let's see how our salmon looks. Ooh, that's just about perfect. Plating is really simple. We'll just pile a little bit of our broccoli on each side. Put in the filet and drizzle in the juices for a nice lemony, peppery, oily sauce. Okay, with sushi it reminded me of the onigarazu, which is brown rice, carrot, cucumber, salmon, cream cheese, and it's all wrapped in nori. So first let's start with some veg prep. And we'll just hurry up and speed this up, peel our cucumbers and our carrots, and then we're gonna julienne them. Seed the cucumber first, and then get our little spears. Aim for about three inches because we're using three inch cake ring molds to build our sandwiches. Okay, first lay down a sheet of nori, put in the cake ring, load up with a layer of brown rice and pack it down with the packer. Next some carrot, cucumber, crumble in some cream cheese, pile in the salmon, Another layer of veg. After, oh, knock down the camera. All right. Okay, pack down the layers we have, and then we'll do more carrot, more cucumber, another layer of rice, and pack that down. It can be a little tricky to uh, get the cake ring off, so it might be a good idea to lightly oil it, but it should slide off easy enough that back together and now wrap with the nori. Once you have the nori around then wrap with the sheet of plastic wrap that you have underneath. Try to get it nice and tight so it stays together when you cut it. And that is the Onagarazu sandwich. All right, and that's the show. A special thanks to the government in Norway for letting us film the Norwegian. Special thanks to the boys over at Shut Up and Sit Down. They've really been an inspiration to shooting this shot. Special thanks to Wiff for letting me get away with everything she does. If you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe and leave supporting comments. We'll see you next time. Prosciutto. Whiff, the dairy ninjas are back. <laughs>